Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Issa Down. I am an artist and author and uh, painting instructor with my company Poppy and Gray Co. Welcome back to my channel where I am sharing some beginner watercolor tutorials for you to be able to feel more confident in your watercolor journey as you start to learn, um, whether you're teaching yourself or whether this is supplementary to other lessons that you are taking. So um, today I am making a quick video or sharing a quick tutorial with you on three quick composition tips. So let's just go ahead and jump right into these three um, tips for you. Tip number one is going to be movement. All right, so let's look at these three quick composition tips together. The first tip is movement, right? So your eye or the eye of your viewer needs to travel through the photo or through the painting. You don't want your um, audience to come and look at your painting and just get stuck in one spot. And so having some movement that moves them through the painting is really important because you want your audience to look at your painting, right? You want them to stop and observe it um, and to take it in and interpret it as they will. Um, so being able to have that movement. So for example, with this painting, the movement comes from, to me, this right corner, um, because there's more happening over here. So that catches my eye first. There's a lot more movement to kind of draw me from this edge. And then because of the way the flowers and the petals are, um, and the leaves are going, um, and the splatters on here as well, my eye is moved then across the page, either directly across like that, or down into this um, bottom corner as well. It's kind of this fluid movement throughout. Um, another example of this is looking at this painting. Um, I personally feel drawn more to the center of the painting. There's a little bit of lightness right here um, that kind of draws my eye in, but then I want to be moved to this flower that's kind of going, these two flowers that are going off to the side but then this one is faced more this way, this one out to the side, and then I'm finally drawn back to this one that kind of <laughs> shows me the door out of the painting. It's kind of this circular uh, pull through of the painting. Um, you know, it can also pull you in up here because it's kind of going like poof out uh, with the splatters, but then you also see it, it's pulling you back down into the more center because of the flower that is sitting behind it. Um, I really love this painting that I did of this chickadee, but uh, I personally, it's too far over to the right and it's up too high uh, for me. But at the same time, it has movement in it, right? Like obviously these wings are moving, but I also am drawn to the center where the darkest part is. And then I'm sort of moved with this movement of the wings and the water behind it and the lack of definition is helping me see the movement in the wings um, and how that's appearing on the page. And that kind of goes with um, composition tip number two, which is that your eye needs an area to rest on. So for example, it could be a bigger flower. It could be a more dominant area on the page. For me, the area to rest on is the head of this chickadee in this um, bird painting because um, this just kind of, your eye doesn't have anywhere to rest. This is asking you to move with the flapping of the wings and the flow of the watercolor with the water on the page and the splatters um, just kind of invoking movement. But the face and the head is where I can rest. There's more detail, there's some definition, um, and there's some depth and darkness here that there isn't anywhere else on the page. And so that is where I rest on this page. In this painting of daffodils, I rest on a couple of things. Um, I will either rest on one of these kind of central flowers um, that are more painted in than the other, you know, the pencil ones I'm not going to rest on as much because they're sort of background support. Um, but in this one in particular, I rest on this relationship between the two flowers, um, you know, one nodding down to the other almost looks to me like they're having some kind of conversation or relationship here. Um, like the elder parents sort of 
beckoning the older child to continue to, you can do it, keep growing. Um, and so to me, that is where my eye starts to rest on there. Another example uh, of your eye needing a place to rest would be these buttercups and uh, peonies in this um, vase where your eye is going to rest on the bigger flowers. Um, it has that bigger presence there and your eye can rest there as opposed to the yellow buttercups, which are moving so much more and have so much less definition that they are the things beckoning your eye to kind of look around, but then you can rest your eye because you don't want it to be pure chaos. You need somewhere for your eye to actually rest. Um, I suppose your eye could also rest on the vase here as well if this is just too much for your eye to take in. So the last composition tip that I have is this rule of thirds. Um, so the rule of thirds is this idea of dividing an image into thirds using two horizontal and two vertical lines. The idea being that following your composition along these lines and their intersection points are going to yield a more interesting picture and is inviting your audience's eye to follow and rest where they more naturally would. So here is an example. Um, from Unsplash where you can see the original image above was cropped to adjust it so the dog's nose and mouth and center of his head follows along those lines yielding a more interesting image. The important part about the rule of thirds is to really understand it well enough that you can choose to either follow or to break the rules. So if we're looking at an image um, and wondering how to use the rule of thirds. We can draw in these imaginary grid lines um, along the top of this painting here, and you can see that this bottom left flower falls at that intersection point of these two lines here. We also have this line over here, which falls along that right vertical line, and we have our center area where we have a big focal point, which is more um, breaking the rule in this case. It's important to note that when we're looking at and thinking about this rule of thirds, this top left quadrant is, according to the rule of thirds, how our eye generally starts scanning. So having this focal point over here in this top left quadrant is actually where our eye is going to be looking first. Then it goes down to the bottom left, followed by the top right, and then the bottom right. So you can see there's a lot more focus in that top left corner and that top left quadrant than in this bottom area where there's not as much happening. And when we continue to look at this image, we can see where our eye is being drawn in that movement and that resting place is also correlating with this rule of thirds. There are a few other rules along with this or guidelines um, in terms of where you're putting the horizon line generally slightly above or below and wanting to utilize this movement and rest space along with this grid quadrant idea that we have happening here um, again keeping in mind some aspect of utilizing this upper quadrant and having a little bit less happening lower down um, or along this center spectrum is going to really increase this movement, but understanding that generally um, you're going to try to be creating visual interest either by utilizing or not using this, but it essentially creates tree and a similar pleasing composition for your audience. Of course, it's not mandatory to make it a beautiful image. That's why understanding it is really helpful, but that's mostly to break or to follow. Hey guys, it's me again, Isa. If you liked this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. Tell me something you loved about the class. Feel free to ask me some questions, but definitely subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future tutorials. See you next time.